Are you tired of game journalists not even completing tutorials, giving terrible games nines, or calling Doom too Doom-like? For some, this is exactly what Doom should be because it resembles the 1993 game of the same name. But with all due respect, those are desperately low expectations. I mean, most of these guys are either extremely mediocre or straight up Grassley 5 in ranked. But not me. I am a cold-blooded, calculated gamer. As a high-ranking member of the Hardcore Gamer Club, I decided to conduct my own game reviews. But I'll be playing games exclusively on the hardest difficulties they offer, rating games not only on how good they are, but also how hard, challenging, or stupidly frustrating these difficulties are. So without further ado, this is my new series, Before You Cry. <sighs> Alright, I'm just gonna address the elephant in the room now. Uh, I am bald. Hello. It's been a while, I guess. Recently, I sunk an additional 60 hours into my previous 70 of playing Risk of Rain 2, but as you can see, I haven't even played it in three whole weeks. That is because I have a pea brain attention span when it comes to video games, so it's honestly a complete miracle that I could even stick with Lethal Company on this channel as long as I did, but that is the past. That's the old Larry. The new Larry is addicted to playing Terraria and working what my parents would call a quote unquote real job. I'm just kidding. Both my parents are extremely supportive of my YouTube endeavors, so I'm honestly truly very lucky. But that's neither here nor there nor underwear. I'm here to talk about the game I recorded for one terabyte's worth of footage. The game you have to beat seven times in order to play its technical hardest difficulty. That's right, baby. Risk of Rain 2, the third person shooter roguelike developed by Hapu Games. These guys did something pretty similar to Helldivers, where Helldivers 1 was a top down shooter. Helldivers 2 was subsequently made a third person shooter. Hapu Games made Risk of Rain 1, which was a 2D platform roguelike. Then, now as you can see, the second entry is completely unrecognizable from its predecessor. And honestly, I just like this more. I just enjoy the feeling of shooter games more. The game is extremely simple and easy to pick up. All you do is shoot cute little guys, get some money, open some boxes, get some items, kill a boss, and move on to the next stage. You do this until stage 5, where you then get the option to fight the final boss and end the game, or loop and start the first stage again with all your items. So you theoretically could play one run forever, which I nearly did in my five hour playthrough on release, but I just gave up on round 69 and sacrificed myself. So yeah, I think that covers the gist of Risk of Rain 2. I could explain what each and every item does, but there's like over 100. I could also explain every single aspect of the game from gameplay to music to graphics to content, but for now I really just want to talk about the difficulty of the game. I'll get into the groove of making better quote unquote reviews later. I've just been working on this video and I've gone without uploading for way too long now. So it's about time I crunch down and get this thing done. Now since this new series is all about playing games on their hardest difficulty, you might be wondering, well, what exactly is the hardest difficulty? Now, if you can look past the Cold Stone Creamery level of difficulty naming conventions, it's safe to assume that the one that's red with horns and looks evil is probably the hardest one. And you'd be correct, typically. The difference in difficulties is pretty simple. Drizzle is baby butt fun mode where players have plus 70 to... Pl Did I read that right? Plus 70 to bonus armor? and a base region of 1.5, Rainstorm or Normal. Honestly, Normal is just fun. You just get to experiment with different item combos and come up with funny builds. It's the default way to play the game with basically just no modifiers. 
in Monsoon, the big evil scary one, is where things get slightly wacky. Not much changes except now your base HP regen is 0.6. However, I haven't mentioned a very specific mechanic that also dictates difficulty, and that is called scaling difficulty. Bear with me here, I won't get all technical, I'll keep everything very caveman like for you guys. All it means is, longer alive, more hard. The real wacky part is that if you play on Monsoon, your difficulty scaling will be 150% of the normal pace, meaning 15 minutes in normal is just 10 in Monsoon. Now everything would be sunshine and rainbows, and I would love to move on from explaining this section, but if you believe Monsoon is the technical hardest difficulty, you would just be very wrong. In fact, in order to obtain the highest difficulty in the game and to receive your Hardcore Gamer Club certificate, you have to beat the game seven different times on the alternative game mode, Eclipse. Eclipse is like normal game, but for people that don't like fun. Eclipse mode is just Monsoon, but with more and more modifiers that work against you, the further you go. In order to progress from Eclipse 1 to Eclipse 2 and so on, you just have to beat Mithrix, which is the final boss. Each Eclipse difficulty will add a new modifier getting wackier and wackier. Now one last caveat is that each of your characters are on separate progression in Eclipse mode. Meaning I could play Eclipse 8 on my Bandit here, but I couldn't do the same on my Loader because I've only unlocked Eclipse 3 for her. So I had to choose the character I wanted to take into Eclipse 8 very wisely. Most of the characters are actually pretty fun to play. A lot of their kits are smooth and work together pretty nicely. Some characters I absolutely despise playing though, but I suppose not all characters are for everyone. Plus, every time you beat the game on Monsoon, each character gets a really cool reskin, which in itself is a fun challenge and gives you a reason to play all the other characters. All characters are pretty fairly balanced, except probably the DLC characters, they're just actually insane. You can play this dude that just leaves his escape pod a whole second faster than the rest of the characters. It's just so insanely broken. Valve, please fix this. No, but this guy can actually just heal at will for a quarter of his health as long as he has meter, which is very often. And when his meter builds up from shooting dudes, he gets enraged and orbital lasers enemies. Well, not orbitally, but you know what I mean. And Railgunner, well, they... they're... Well, um, I'm running out of time, so I'm not gonna make the Modern Warfare 2 trickshot meme that I wanted to, but uh, hey, maybe you'll see one in the next video, who knows. Most characters are just vehicles for items in my opinion. You either want one big shot that utilizes crowbars and flat damage upgrades, or someone that can shoot many projectiles for getting increased chances to proc certain items that have chance on hit. Which is why I love Bandit. His shotgun spread is 5 bullets that have a chance to proc things like ATG missiles, sticky bombs, and tri-tip daggers while also having a revolver dealing 600% damage. But wait, there's more! If you deal a killing blow to Mithrix with the revolver, you unlock a different variant called Desperado that will stack damage each time you get a kill with it until the end of the stage. So you could theoretically just beat the game with no items if you were persistent enough with Desperado. So with all this in mind, Bandit is sort of this jack of all trades, master of all, and I thought he would just be a good candidate to spend the next 8 to 10 hours getting to Eclipse 8 since he has the option to adapt to certain items on a whim, meaning I could play many different builds on Bandit. So now let's move on to the- I'm gonna be frank, the modifiers don't matter much at all. I could sit here and give you a noble hero's journey through my time playing through Eclipse 1 through 8 and how hard it was, but I'm not going to do that. I originally loved the idea of Eclipse and how I thought I had to think differently about what items I wanted to focus on and which ones negated the effects of certain mods, but I quickly learned that none of that even mattered. 
So here's how I dealt with every single eclipse. One, ally starting health minus 50%. For this one, I just found any healing item that would let me heal up to the initial missing 50%. Eclipse 2, teleporter radius minus 50%. Actually, the hardest modifier, believe it or not, because the DLC for this game is broken. Let me just take a small tangent here and say the void fields are completely unbalanced. You basically go into a new area with time completely stopped and you can get like 15 to 20 items here including a guaranteed red if you completed all the waves. Now in order to complete these waves it's basically a teleporter event except everywhere outside the bubble will hurt you meaning unless you have a lot of healing slash regen, the void fields in Eclipse 2 are no longer worth doing. This is probably the biggest debuff out of all the modifiers, funnily enough. Funnily? Or no, funny enough. Eclipse 3, any fall damage plus 100% and is lethal, is very simple with Bandit. You really should never take fall damage with him because his cloak ability does this little bounce when you go into stealth and another one when you go out of it as well. Meaning you could just never take fall damage. The only time I would be worried is if I fell off the map. Eclipse 4, enemy speed plus 40%, don't get hit. Eclipse 5, ally healing minus 50%, don't get hit. No, I'm only partially joking. This one has a few stipulations to it. This makes the void fields even less of an option now, and we basically have to take a few more healing items. Eclipse 6, enemy gold drops minus 20%. This one feels like it does more than it actually is, but just pick up a brittle crown and you'll be golden. Or if you really feel like it, go with a roll of pennies, I suppose. Eclipse 7, enemy cooldowns minus 50%. Don't get hit. No. Seriously, that's all there is to any of this. I really don't even notice the difference. Eclipse 8, allies receive permanent damage. Oh my god, this one was so fucking easy. It literally doesn't even make a difference usually because permanent damage isn't even permanent. So what's the point? It's a weird BS mechanic where a portion of your HP bar is just gone instead of actual permanent damage. So sure, it's less of a punch, but it's still permanent and carries through all the stages. At least you would think it only lasts for the duration of your stage and then it resets the very next. It makes no sense to me and honestly just does nothing. Just don't get fucking hit. What if Beetle negated the permanent damage debuff? No, that doesn't that doesn't count. But it might lessen if it's not percentage based, it actually might help. Oh, it's gone. Okay. Dude, that's light work. Okay. <laughs> this is easy. <laughs> this is just easy. Clip say is easy. Sorry. That's going in the review. So yeah, this is the aforementioned hardest difficulty in the game. It boils down to a few minor inconveniences, but nothing unmanageable. Now, I'll admit, it's actually still pretty tough, and I've had a few run resets here and there, but none of this even matters when you take advantage of one very simple strat. Now this godlike strat is just so simple it hurts. This is like using summons in Elden Ring at this point. Not that I use them, but for a challenge like this, sometimes I'll just use every tool at my disposal. It only takes like 5 minutes to realize you have a bad start, and 9 out of 10 times it's worth it to just reset since the run will last up to an hour. So in reality, you'll just be saving precious time that you could be spending not editing this video. Risk of Rain 2 is an insanely fun game, don't get me wrong. It's a great game to come home from a long day of work and just shoot things and blow up your entire screen. It's not hard and artifacts make the game mind-numbingly easy, but it's super, super fun. 
The challenge of Monsoon was hard at first, but there's a linear progression of making the game easier by learning more about it. Once you know what every enemy does and what every attack Mythrix does, it's easy to beat the game on Monsoon or any Eclipse for that matter. Now any game can be easy enough with enough time put into it, I acknowledge that. However, playing through Eclipse for the first time never forced me to come up with an elaborate plan or pay too much attention to enemy attacks and patterns. It pretty much came down to the first stage. Even when I had a really, really bad build, I was still able to defeat Mithrix, and that was probably the most fun I had. It was a super rewarding challenge beating Mithrix with a bad build, and you could say, in order to have fun with Eclipse, Larry, you should just not do the strat. Well, sure, but if I keep losing over and over, like a monkey in the year 400,000 that finally wrote Shakespeare, I would eventually get a really good build and just win. Overcoming Eclipse 8 didn't feel insanely rewarding to me, and it was a slog to get through to be honest. Finishing it was a breath of fresh air. For diehard fans, this is a decent way to spend your time, but there's not an incentive beyond bragging rights. I give Risk of Rain 2's hardest difficulty, Monsoon plus Eclipse 8, a 4 out of 10. Really, really fun game, but pretty lackluster challenge. For those who care, sorry this came out so late. I honestly did have a lot going on in the day-to-day -day life, and my work schedule is never the same two weeks in a row, but I'm slowly figuring out a way to balance everything. I still plan on streaming on twitch.television slash shirt113 every now and then, but that's about it. For those who don't care, well, look at you. You watched the whole video, so you cared at least a little bit. Thank you. All right, that's it. Subscribe or I'll tell all your friends about that one thing.